Well, earlier today, Vice President Kamala Harris disclosed that she will visit the demilitarized zone between North and South Korea as part of her trip to Asia. The visit to the DMZ will likely raise the antenna of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un just one day before the vice president's arrival in the area. North Korea did fire its 19th ballistic missile of the year into the waters of the Korean Peninsula. In a CNN interview with South Korean, Korea's president, they say their biggest concern is North Korea's nuclear missile threat, but he looks forward to working with the U.S. to contribute, contribute to global peace and stability. Of state of my country as well as the Korean military. I would like to note that our alliance with the United States is expanding its horizons to economic fields, as well as cutting edge technologies. Tokyo correspondent Richard Kimber joins us now with more on these international relations and how the vice president's trip will contribute to them. Uh, vice President Harris just left Japan where she met with the new prime minister. Let's take a quick listen. The alliance between Japan and the United States is a cornerstone of what we believe is integral to peace, stability and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific region. And it is something we prioritize because we also believe it is in the best interest of the American people. So Japan has been very concerned about China and the potential invasion of Taiwan. Uh, Richard, what is the likelihood uh, the new prime minister brought this up with uh, Kamala Harris? That's right. This has been a major talking point between the Japanese Prime Minister and uh, the U.S. Vice President because Japan is at a crossroads, really. This state funeral of the former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is really exposing the social division uh, here in the country between those who really want to pursue more of Shinzo Abe's uh, nationalistic policies of increasing defense spending and even revising the country's long-standing pacifist constitution in a bid to ultimately protect itself against these types of threats. And that's exactly what it's understood that uh, Fumio Kishida was discussing uh, with Vice President Kamala Harris the need for Japan to be more integrated in an allied response to what it sees as threats from China and North Korea uh, towards this part of the world. During the tensions that escalated very quickly towards Taiwan, uh, there were missiles being fired from China into areas of ocean that Japan claims as its own, and that's really escalated the sense of urgency on the part of the Japanese government to seek uh, allied uh, support from the U.S. with regards to its own defense strategy. And of course, any Chinese action against Taiwan not only would drag us in, what, what would br bring that entire region uh, into that uh, conflict. So there's high concern about that. Let me ask you this too. What can we expect from VP Harris's trip to the demilitarized zone between North and South Korea? We've been seen many other leaders in the past take this trip. What do we expect this time around? Yes, well, she's pursuing this uh, effort, really, while she's in this region to develop what has been called by U.S. officials an ironclad commitment uh, to regional stability. And what that really means, of course, is uh, making a clear message that the U.S. supports Japan and the U.S. supports South Korea, and it does not support North Korea and ultimately probably not China either. And that's why uh, these visits are being pointedly directed uh, in uh, the North Korean and Chinese direction. The real symbol of her going to South Korea's demilitarized zone is that she wants to make it clear, according to U.S. officials, that there will be no backing down on the part of the U.S. towards pressurizing Pyongyang to denuclearize. The last high-profile time, of course, that we saw a U.S. official visit in this way was former President Donald Trump meeting with Kim Jong-un at that very border. That won't be happening this time because the diplomatic relations have really broken down since then. But there's U.S. drills taking place right now with the South Korean military off the coast of South Korea, and Kamala Harris is expected to meet with U.S. commanders to get a briefing on how those are going. And those drills are certainly uh, irking uh, the North Korean establishment. The uh, ambassador to the United Nations has caused those drills a vicious cycle of tension and confrontation. They're blaming the U.S. Uh, for stoking the fires over this. But there's clearly uh, no effort on the part of South Korea, Japan or the U.S. to back down over this. And that's why this visit from Kamala Harris is so symbolic that she's going not just to Seoul, but to the DMZ right up to the border of North Korea. And, of course, North Korea, as you said, test-fired that missile shortly before the vice president uh, left Washington on, on Sunday, sort of sending a message and <laughs> taking up the tension a little bit uh, as a backdrop to this trip. Correspondent Richard Kimber reporting live there in Tokyo. Richard, as always, thank you, sir.
Well, joining us now with some context on the importance of the vice president's trip is Ellen Kim, deputy director and Korea chair at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Thanks so much for your time this morning. We certainly appreciate it and lots uh, to get to. So as I men mentioned a second ago, North Korea fired its 19th uh, ballistic missile into the sea on Sunday, just as VP Harris was getting out of Washington to make her way to Asia. What do you think the message there was? We certainly have seen many of these test fires uh, before. What was the message of this particular one, do you think? So, uh, thank you. So I believe that North Korea's recent um, just fired uh, another short-range policy missile this, uh, in nearly four months. Um, this is another uh, violation of the UN Security Council resolutions by North Korea. And um, and this was a clearly message against uh, sending to South Korea and United States as the two countries are prepared to um, conduct a joint military exercises involving the U.S. Um, aircraft carrier, which came uh, arriving in Seoul, South Korea in for the first time in since 2019. So, you know, um, the North Korea has been always being criticized in the U.S. Uh, ROK joint military exercise. So this is clearly as a U.S. hostile policy North Korea and has been def uh, defying the um, uh, U.S. ROK um, denegotiation talks um, as uh, this is a clearly a big thing, uh, threat to North Korea's regime. Mm. And Japan, of course, has been very concerned about China's saber rattling regarding Taiwan. It's been going on, uh, needless to say, for many, many years. And certainly Speaker Pelosi's trip ratcheted up that tension uh, as well. Um, Japan's prime minister condemned China's recent military action uh, in the Taiwan Strait. So should that be looked at as business as usual or something more? It does seem that the tension is is flaring up. I'm just wondering, is there something really boiling here or is it more bluster? Well, uh, President Biden uh, recently stated that uh, U.S. force will defend Taiwan if China invades the island. So I think that there, this is uh, increasingly a very dangerous situation for um, the uh, for the region. And I think that Japan per particularly perceived that Taiwan is a uh, um, the any military in in inter uh, intervention on in Taiwan creates a major threat for Japan um, because of geographical pr proximity as well as the uh, uh, Japan's uh, ongoing historical uh, territorial dispute with the China in the East China Sea. The problem, uh, South Korea is also perceived uh, China's um, situation, uh, confrontation with Taiwan is a very serious, um, but South Korea is a bit um, nervous or cautious about Taiwan issues um, because largely um, South Korea perceived uh, security threat um, is um, priority is on North Korea. President uh, Yoon sung yeol actually stated recently that um, North Korea's nuclear and missile threat is an imminent threat to South Korea and a war over Taiwan could actually um, lead to the North Korea's provocations, adding that uh, North Korea's threat um, it needs to be met uh, by the South Korea first. So South Korea's policy priority um, actually presents uh, limitations in the U.S. ROK Japan trilateral cooperation on Taiwan issues. Mm. And I think it was the president of South Korea was recently caught on a, on a hot mic uh, calling members of the U.S. Congress uh, idiots. An unfortunate moment, but of course we won't see any of that tough um, language or candid uh, language uh, when he meets with the vice president. What does South Korea, though, want to hear? Uh, from VP Harris, what what do they need from us now uh, that they may have not gotten from previous administrations? How's the dyna dynamic there changed? Well, so the president, South Korean president's office, has flatly denied that uh, President Yoon had uh, insulted the U.S. Congress on hot mic and. Um, Clearly, um, that any untrue um, media reports by the Korean South Korean media reports uh, is threatening the South Korea's important relationship with South uh, United States. And the White and the Korean government official made a clarification with the White House, uh, and the US, uh, United States has been basically keeping a distance for, away from this diplomatic issues with South Korea. So I think that. Um, 
President, uh, Vice President Harris' trip presents an opportunity for South Korea to show that the U.S. RK alliance remains strong and um, uh, remains unscathed by this diplomatic uh, controversy surrounding the President Yoon's uh, recent remarks. Dr. Ellen Kim, Korea Chair and Deputy Director at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Thanks so much for your expertise this morning. We appreciate it.